Hi, Francois. Hi, Santis. So it's uh, my pleasure to speak with you again, but about your book, right? Yeah. Uh, book is called Encyclopedia Laconica, Volume One, and uh, you are author, right? Uh, yes. Uh, Francois, the first question is: It music, right? It's not only about music; it's also about uh, different people, about fishes. Uh, I mean, it's not on, there's not only one topic. Yes, uh, this I understand, but uh, whether this book is music. This is some kind of music. Yeah, yes, because of the association between text, images, music scores. You mean like so, this, right? For yes, for instance, yes, for instance. And can you just uh, tell me a little bit background, right? Of the book, how, how it started? Or it's commission, or it's your free will, or... Oh, it's purely free will. It's purely free will, and uh, it started 15 years ago, and I, I accumulated articles and ideas and collages and images uh, in, a, in, a, in a notebook. And then I have so much, I have so many of them, that I decided to make them accessible and... Uh, to, to print them, to publish them in a, in a sort of professional way. So that's the result that you have now. Um, originally, I didn't think of making it a book, but just to keep it for myself. Mm -hmm. But because I have so much of this material, I thought, well, it's frustrating to accumulate half finished material. So I wanted to finish it. So this first volume is finished and now I'm working on the second volume. Okay, so it would be like some kind of uh, encyclopedia in, a, in quite uh, in, in different volumes, right? Twelve. How many volumes will be? It will be one or two or three? Twelve. Twelve, twelve volumes? Yes. Okay, I got it. I got it. And can you tell a little bit all about the first volume? What is the main, uh, main narrative or main message here? Uh, well... The, the general idea of the of the twelve volumes, yes, um, first, it's um, it's to provide an alternative um, musicology or alternative zoology, alternative architecture treaties. It's about different subjects, but it's always invented. Yes, it's never uh, it never coincides completely with reality. So I invent composers, I invent instruments, I invent um, scores, stories, and so on. But it's not made really to be realistic, yes. but more to be somehow possible, somehow. So it's more, let's say, uh, uh, so it's um, your imagination of alternative uh, history of music. Yes, alternative uh, repertoire, alternative instruments, alternative composers, um, alternative places, alternative traditions. Um, yes, not on, not only not only history of music. History of music is one part of it. Yes, yes. Let's say all landscape music, right? Yes, yes, yes. And the second volume will also be a little bit about music, and then it goes to zoology, architecture, um, biographies, magic, a lot of different topics. Yes, yeah, so it's a, so it's about how we right how we can encyclopedia one is about how we can reimagining uh, music uh, with the help of the text and uh, visuals. It's it's uh, how we can think music by associating these different media. And the collages also are important. You know, the, the image which goes with which article, yes. it sort of uh, expands the, 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 the meaning. It, because the article exists separately and the image also, of course, but because they meet, because they are together on the same page, then it builds another language, another meaning, another possibility. Yeah, it's... Uh, so it's a lot about connecting things which are not used to be connected together. Got it, got it, got it. So it's like, let's say it's your imagination of music, right? 
Yes. Alternative. And, and, and then the question is, which is maybe because, you know, as an encyclopedia has different chapters, right? And I see there is different chapters as well, right? Yes. And it starts, for example, with one hour, right? Or one hour, how? Um, one hour songs, right? Yes. The one hour song. This is the first chapter. But what is for you, to your mind, let's say, uh, three most interesting concepts? Which which is, are in this book, right? But are not in, uh, in, in are not in right are not in I don't know physical uh, are not in physical or, or musical landscape or are not that landscape what we now are presenting. Um, it's nothing. I wouldn't say that there is one thing in particular. It's a, what I try to develop is a lot of different possibilities. Yes. So for instance, this one hour songs is the idea of uh, imagining songs which always last one hour and then to uh, develop musicology around it. You know, if this existed, yes. then how would a musicolog uh, musicologist approach it? So yeah. I put myself in the position of a musicologist and I write as a musicologist uh, about something which doesn't exist. Go ahead, go ahead. But what is, let's say, give me a, tell about three, three interesting things, like three, just give like three features on a, a three, three chapters, right? Mm -hmm. Which you would say, which are the most intrig in, in, intriguing one. Oh, that's difficult because what I find intriguing may not be the same for you and for somebody else. You know, yeah. I think it has a dictionary or encyclopedia. It, it's not really meant, it doesn't have a direction. It doesn't have an order. Yes. It's, you know, you can open one page, uh, read something. And then if you open another page, then it's uh, connected by common procedure, common mind, common state of mind. Yes. But, but the topic are completely different. I mean, not the topic, but the, um, the yeah, the stories, the articles, the themes are different. Yes. So. I don't know what is important, maybe for me personally. For you personally, uh, yes. Yes, for me personally, the one about the sound shadows. Okay. The idea that there is always a shadow in each sound or each object in the world possess a sound shadow. Okay. This, can you a little bit elaborate on that? Because this is well, a really it's, interesting it's, concept. It's, yes, it's uh, a Shadow of the music, right? Uh, or shadow of the sound, right? Yes, so it's a hypothesis which is a little bit based on the platonic uh, idea that there is an ideal form which is uh, abstract, you know, each thing has a, a, a sort of pure abstract existence. Uh, and this platonician idea gave me the, the, the idea that maybe each object of the world possesses a sound that we don't hear um and there is this guy uh, called paul emile de Catio who invented a machine which reads the sound of this object um, i like i mean what i like in this idea is to think that everything is sound everything is potentially music in the world you know this this object uh, but also a concept or this little thingy uh, it also, it's also sound, it also has a sound. So we are surrounded by a, a enormous complex of sounds that we don't hear because we are imperfect, we are only humans. Also, <clears throat> you know, it's based on this, uh, on this uh, antique idea that uh, of the harmony of spheres. You know, when the ancient Greek thought that uh, planets and stars have sound, and the, the harmony of the stars is uh, due to the, 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 their relations. So there is a harmony of the spheres, which is the perfect music, the absolute music given by the stars. It's, a, it's, a, it's of course abstract because nobody has ever heard that, even the Greek, when they were writing about it. And they said, yes, we cannot hear it because it's a constant sound. So we are so used to it that we don't hear it anymore. Why not? So it's this kind of uh, back 
idea, which uh, gave me the idea of shadow of sound. What another another one is uh, is maybe this composer who made uh, music only with his body. So he had surgery uh, that he did himself to become a music instrument himself. Mm -hmm. And then he decided to uh, perform on stage his own body and then to make an opera himself. And this opera, he's the singer, he's the orchestra himself, and he wrote the music and he wrote the libretto himself. He does everything himself. And of course, the subject is uh, Jesus, because he's so megalomaniac that the subject yeah. should have been Jesus. And of, obviously, he performs it only once, because the end of the opera is also the death of Jesus. Um, so you see, it's a completely different approach. Uh, it's an idea of, of uh, being the human is the music and it's from the body and only from the body. The body provides the music completely and it goes to the extreme that uh, the guy dies uh, by producing it. So you see, it's a, it's a completely, different, uh, completely different concept. Uh, yeah, there are many, many stories like this. They, are, they always have a dimension of anecdote. Yes. Uh, where the guy lived and it, if he had a family and what did he do as a blah, blah, blah. But there is behind, there is always a concept. I mean, concept. There's always a sort of abstract idea. Yes, 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 yes. But are there are some, I don't know, maybe the most, um, can you tell about the most bravest ideas, right? Which are only possible in this format, but are mm -hmm. not possible in real music now, nowadays. Well, the one I just described you is not possible. Like somebody who wants to, to have surgery what? to become an instrument and to die from it, for instance. Okay, so this, uh, and, okay, uh, this is a very, very interesting story, right? Uh, uh, but uh, tell me about maybe uh, something, uh, uh, let's say, how you, uh, no, 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 the process of of, no, of uh, collecting materials. It, no, it, no, is it or your own stories, or it's like uh, you, you somehow made some researches. You go to libraries, uh, or no, or no, it's only my stories, and I accumulated uh, hundreds of old books, yes, old magazines, and I kept a lot of imaging fr uh, from this old book. So sometimes I, I have the text in mind, so I write the text and then I put images around. And sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes I make collages, I've put some yeah. images and because I like how they connect or I like the design or I just find them absurd or funny or interesting or questioning. Yeah. Most of the time they question me for some reason. And then when they're on the page, then I write the story. Yes. And the story of course is a sort of of story development of the images. So yeah, I'm trying um, not to make it predictable or not to make it uh, logical. Yes. You know? I'll always try to have some weird connections between things. And what was the process? I don't know. How, okay, when you started and, and uh, uh, did you write like essays? And then, then second essay, or you collected material, you plan all the book and... Uh, no, I can show you the original book. I start on page one. I start on page one. So that is the original book, yeah. And I start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then I do this. And when I'm done, I do this. And yes. when I'm done, I do this. And maybe this. And when I'm done, I do this. Yes. And so on. There is no plan whatsoever. Yes, got it. Got it. If there was a plan, then I wouldn't be able to do it because it would be too complicated. Okay. But it. somehow, you know, for me, it's better like this because an encyclopedia is not meant to be, um, to have, 
how can I say? An encyclopedia is a collection of articles about something. But you can remove one article, the encyclopedia will still exist. Of course, one wish uh, the encyclopedia to be complete and to have as many articles as possible, but you can remove one. Yes. It's like the dictionary, yes? The dictionary, if there is one word missing, the, the dictionary still exists. Of course, yes. you wish to have all the, all the words, but uh, it can be that there is a word which is missing. Yes. Um, and there is no plan except that in the dictionary, there is an alphabetical order. And me, in my case, I pretend that there is an order, but actually there is no order. You got it. You got it. You got it. It's fake. Got it. Even the chapters, the chapters are, are, are fake. Got it. Got it. Well, well but, uh, uh, it's like, it's, it's pure. Uh, in that, uh, in this book, the idea is that the music, in the purest form, is imagination of it, right? Yes. So I read the book, and, and through that chapter. I imagine, uh, I imagine yeah. music, and this music uh, is, is in the purest form, right? You know, yes. uh, and when here I say understand, right? Just reading something. But this uh, this idea is here that I read the book, right? Chapter, mm -hmm. and then there is music which is impossible, uh, at least nowadays with uh, yes. mm -hmm. with our restrictions, right? Yes. Uh, but I at least can imagine what music could be, right? Voila. Voilà. It's exactly that. It's it's an idea of. Uh, I think it's a project which could be. Maybe Peter Ablinger has had a little bit a similar idea when he does these pieces. He composes music which exists only by the description and the title. Yes. You know, so you have a title and you have a sort of a concept of the piece. But he never did it because exactly because it's it's not really possible. Yes, yes. Or maybe it's not interesting for him to do it. I don't know. But um, it's a little bit the same idea, except that Ablinger does it maybe as a composer, and it's his pieces. They, maybe they don't exist, but it's still his pieces. So it's still the work of a composer. But for me, this encyclopedia is not a work really of a composer. Although, of course, I am a composer, and it's because I am a composer that I can do it, you know, because I have the ideas to imagine music like a composer would do. Yes. Yes. But um, I don't. I don't want to compose the the music of these people. You know. Got it. Got it. Got it. And for you as a composer, right? You wrote a lot of chapters, a lot of uh, uh, like, let's say, a lot of. Imaginations of of music, right? Mm -hmm. What are the most intriguing one? Which you, as a composer, you would like to? Okay, maybe let's wait 10, 15 years, and I would like to listen to that. Ah, well, I would say that all all are attractive somehow. All are very mysterious and all are very um, strange. I'm curious about all of them. But, you know, I still think that it's better not to listen to them. Why? Well, um, because maybe they are disappointing when you, when you realize them. Maybe they are more exciting to think of and to imagine them and to dream of them than to, to listen to them. I don't know. Because there is this music which doesn't exist only in the imagination, but there's also all the context. The context is, I don't know, this guy who was from Italy and who uh, his grandfather was an organ player. I don't know, whatever anecdote I built. And to me, this anecdote is very important because it gives the context and, yes. it's, and then it makes the, the music more attractive to think of. And if I just listen to this weird music, then maybe it's less interesting. I don't know. The fiction has a lot of importance, I think. You know, the idea that it's stories. It's, it's like not like reading a novel, because of course it's not a novel, and I'm not, I'm not a, a writer in the classical sense, of course. Yes. But still, there is this idea of um, uh, inventing stories telling weird stories 
but but uh, but in one way, right? We can say this: these uh, stories are part of uh, radical imagination, and radical in that sense that it's freeing out the music from sound. Yes, from wanting to listen, right? So we are saying, okay, here is because you are freeing it out, right? So you let's say you you you. you Yes, I think in this sense it's uh, it's uh, it's conceptual music. I mean that it it exists as an object of speculation. Of course, it's connected to real music, but it's still an object of speculation. But the the actual sound of it is uh, is mm, secondary. It's not so important. It's led to the imagination of everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For instance, this guy who becomes an instrument and makes an opera of himself about Jesus, if you think of it and you read the story, maybe your mind will start imagining a certain music that this guy does. Yes. And maybe I will imagine a completely different music and uh, you know, somebody else also a completely different music. And that's, that's still the music of this guy. Yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's the, the conceptual idea. I mean, the conceptual aspect of this project. Um, it doesn't require uh, uh, to, be, to be in the real world. Got it, got it. And that's the reason I can do one volume about music and another one about zoology and another one about architecture because it, it doesn't, call for reality it calls for uh, enjoying the imagination and the development and the possibility and uh, thinking something you know something new yes. but it doesn't say you should do it and listen to it and let's build a house like this and uh, you know it's not the idea at all yeah, but if you're making uh, as a like let's say encyclopedia Laconic and volume free about zoology, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's not any more music, right? Exactly. Then it's uh, zoology, right? Exactly. And um, uh, okay, okay, from one point of view, of course, we can say this is like conceptual mu music and it's purest form because we are making, uh, we are liberating music from sound. Uh, but meanwhile, we can say it's uh, purest form multi-sensory music, right? Because our imagination is not stuck into particularly right, okay, domains or senses. It's not particularly like visual or it's not particularly uh, sound-oriented or smell-oriented or taste-oriented, right? Yes. Um, for me, it's yes. Both are both are true. Do you have a story where, um, where, let's say, where music is eatable? Mm, not exactly. I have a story of uh, Cook, who was a composer and who organized his food according to the sound that the food was producing. So when you cut something, it has a certain, it produces a certain sound. And the, when you eat it, when you, when you chew it, it produces a certain sound and that he composed, he composed it. S but it's not exactly, yeah, th yeah, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about visual part, right? How you choose visuals or, because it, is, it seems that it's more, a lot of, Archive materials as well, right? So yes. It's, it's a lot of archive material. Uh, some are just a uh, quote, so it's just a photo like the one you showed. Some are, 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 are real collages, elaborated collages like this one, for instance. Yes. Um, what else? Some are um, a mix of collages and uh, and uh, elaborated cut up. Yes. Uh, there are drawings, there are maps, a lot of maps. Uh, and how do I choose them? Well, it's, 
it very much depends on, on what I have, which I find interesting at the moment. So I'm trying to connect the, the thing by, by uh, choosing different fields, for instance, a map and uh, um, uh, a medicine book. Yes. And then I, I put them together so that the, the country starts looking like a body, or, uh, inside part of a body, or I put a score and then I put little advertisement on the score to give the, uh, the feeling that there's a double reading of the music and of the advertisement. Uh, I, I try to find always different strategies, how to, to associate images. But I, I always want the, the, the material to be very recognizable. It's a person, yeah. it's a map, it's a fish, you know? It's because a score. It's a score, yes. Always something very recognizable because it's this first material, it's this first idea we have on this thing, which is the, 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 the source of the, 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 which is the possibility of imagination. What I want to say is that if it were abstract, if it were only uh, collages without connection to to real world, or you know, um, then it would become. How can I say? It would become a pure visual uh, work for aesthetic purpose. When my first purpose is not to do something aesthetic, but it's to make something which uh, tells something, you know. Of course, it, it's also aesthetic, but it's not, I don't try at first to make something beautiful or something which looks nice. Or not. I'm trying to put some things together which give a certain idea, a certain, uh, 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 yes, um, to make a sort of a new possibility also mm -hmm. visually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a new association. Yes, but then it means, right? I say understand. Then, uh, then this this is possible uh, from your music here. This music is possible to conserve only through read through individual reading, right? It's it it will be completely different music when I will tell the stories to you back, right? Yes. It will be completely different uh, musical experiences because because uh, there wouldn't be like all this. Um, uh, visual images uh, which which are somehow right uh, communicates uh, maybe unconsciously or consciously uh, some kind of ideas right yes absolutely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very individual but you know also uh, i think this this process of imagination is a very personal and individual process um that's why uh, it's difficult for me to explain it, because if I explain it, it's only my uh, my relation to the meaning. Good. But what I want is more to collect material and then to put it together, but not to try to find one explanation. It because I know help, that right? the people who will read it will give their personal answer, if they wish, of course. Good. If it strikes them for some reason, because they find it ugly or because they find it funny or because they find it intriguing, then it will start a process of interpretation. Okay. But myself, I would not give one interpretation. Yes. So it's like this book is like uh, from from one perspective, it's like let's say open music when uh, when I as a, let's say as a reader or or what or, or uh, of the book, right? I create this my own imagination of that music, right? Exactly. And this creation of uh, of this imagination is a part of uh, of this musical process. Exactly. Exactly. And, and can you tell about? Uh, did you did, did you prepare uh, make it the book alone or? Yes. Or, or there was some kind of collaboration with others? No, I did everything myself. And uh, and uh, it's like here is like luck on publishing. It's your own company, or it's uh, yes, yes. So it's not like any like uh, there is not like a publishing house who who stands by you or. No.
Yes, it's, um, <clears throat> what was, uh, let's say, the most interesting thing, right? Or three learnings for that process of, re of preparing uh, the book. What is, what you, what you learned for yourself, right? What was interesting? Um, well, I, Learn, I don't know, but there is a there 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 is a very intense and childish pleasure to do it. You know, it's very enjoyable to to because somehow to write an encyclopedia is a, is is not possible because an encyclopedia, by definition, is uh, like bigger is bigger than the knowledge of one person. Yes. Yes, that's really the I think one very important aspect of an encyclopedia. One person yes. cannot write can cannot really write an encyclopedia. You need to be several people to write it. So, for me to do it alone is a very you know it's like the child who runs uh, in the garden with a, a plastic sword and who says uh, I am the king. It's a little bit this feeling. Because the, the, when the when the child does it, he sort of believes it, but he knows that it's not true. So it's a sort of symbol, you know. It's a it's a game. So there is a big pleasure in making this game. Yes, yes. And if there is any success in the book, I mean, if there is something which is good in the book, it's this feeling which goes to the to the reader. Is when when the reader opens the book and turns the pages and start to read, the reader has the same feeling of joy of invention and joy of absurdity, connection, concept, music, uh, funny, weird, and this sort of uh, yes, like maybe you know when you are a child and you see uh, uh, the first science fiction movie and you're like. Oh wow! Is it really possible to be in in the space with these monsters and so on? This sort of feeling is is what uh, is 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 what I'm trying to find. Mm -hmm. And then, if I find it, maybe I can provide it also a little bit to the viewer, to the reader. Okay, yeah. good. And can you uh, maybe? Of course, and maybe the, one of the most important questions, right? The last one. Um, if I would like to, uh, let's say, to enjoy this music, where I can buy a book and how I can buy a book? You have to write me and I will send one to you because I don't, it's not distributed in stores because it's such a private uh, book company and such a private writing that uh, it doesn't exist in the market. I tried first to, to send it to publishers, but they were like, ha, ha, ha. You know, it's so expensive to produce because it's big, it's full of colors. And they said, and who is going to buy that? Who is going to read it? No one. And they are, of course, they are true. It's correct. It's a very, very small audience because it's, it's such a strange idea. So all the publishers told me it's, it looks very beautiful, it's very interesting, but uh, it will cost us so much money and we are never going to sell any of them. So I decided to do it myself. And then the people who want it, they write me, they find me on the web, on Facebook, and then I'm, I'm happy to send one, one copy. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for our talk, right? Thank you, Sandalis. <laughs>